What is it that you should be doing? How hard should you be throwing in practice? Show me what you got. I've had this question come up a lot lately. You don't throw hard enough, you throw too hard. What is it? Which should you do? How much? We know that this is your homework. Well, I'm gonna tell you in this video. Check it out. It's Eric Johnson. In today's YouTube video, one of the things we're going to talk about is training speed. How hard should we be throwing in practice? Now, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced thrower, this is just a good tip to keep in mind that you need a little bit of everything. And one of the things we like to do is we like to start out on normal practice days. If we're not simulating a competition, one of the things we're going to be talking about is three training speeds. And one of the things, if you haven't checked it out, check out our video on how to warm up properly with your throws. And this will kind of add on to that video. So what we're talking about is the one one, two, three speed of your throws practices. So that means we're gonna start out with level one. Level one is gonna be in that kind of anywhere from 50 to 70%, very easy. We're trying to set patterns. So we wanna take a, a number of throws as we begin to feel the right motions, connections, stretch. If it's the discus, everything's long and stretching and you're feeling that. Very similar like what we talked about in the video on, on warm up speed and how to pattern properly. But here's what we're gonna do when we look at our daily practices, we wanna take some of those throws 50 to 70 percent we want to get in there field positions and we want to again set up patterns so that's why we're going to take a number of those throws are we continuous and smooth and when you're slower like that one of the most important things is you're going to feel positions it's super super critical now one of the other things that we're going to do is we're going to go to the level two on our speed and what is that so now we're going to increase maybe from 70 to up to 80 percent so real simple thing is that if you have like a 200 foot discus thrower and you're looking at 80 percent of 200 that's 160 feet. That is not a huge throw for a 200 foot discus thrower, but that's an 80% of their max. So they need to put effort and put a cone out and be working that 80%. It's just fast enough to be able to move faster than say that 50 to 70% range, work on creating the right patterns for the central nervous system. I know if people throw that out, but there's true. Throwing is very unnatural. You're trying to learn patterns and train your body and your mind is telling your body what to do. So having those speeds that enable you to have that kinesthetic feel, that ability to understand positions and understand if you're on balance or off or what felt good or what didn't, if it felt short, if it felt long, all these sorts of things that are really important to have that feedback to make an adjustment. Are you, are you shortening your arm too much in delivery that pulls off the delivery leg causes a late block and loss of the delivery side, which is a massive loss in distance. So if we're slowing down just enough, do we feel everything staying longer and developing? And that's the key of these shorter speeds. So anywhere from that 50 to 80. So now you got the third speed and that's that competition gear. And we definitely like to go hard, especially as we go into season, we're going to be simulating a lot more meat style situations where we're warming up like a meat. We're competing in practice. We want throws where fouls count and the whole deal. And we want to go hard and fast and we want to simulate scenarios and that sort of thing. And we'll talk about that more in another video, but that comp speed, that full 100% full throttle type throw where you're really getting after it, chasing it, and you're starting to learn that timing where you're trying to go super fast. But you want to set up the speeds one and two first so that you're going to be able to feel to move into that like, okay, now I got the pattern set. I feel the technique. I feel the rhythm. Now I'm just going to increase the speed on all phases of that and I'm going to hit it. It's not going to be, I'm going to go slow and then just hit the finish. I'm going to be moving everything's quicker. My wind up's a little faster, my entry's a little faster. So in our situation, pillar one's faster, two, three, four, five, six. They're, everything's faster across the board because we want that competition speed and that competition speed and super fast continuous motion, whether that's the glider shot, no pauses, that's what's going to add up to the big distances. At any rate, everybody, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to comment below, give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and we will see you on the next video. Be sure to check out our next videos. Be sure to subscribe. Visit our website for free videos. Click the links below. We have links to our free mini course. Check out our websites for camps and different detailed information. Throw farther faster by understanding the science with the Throwing Chain Reaction System. Thanks so much for watching.